Welcome back to Whatever Garage. Today we're gonna to work on the interior. We're gonna fix a switch, and then we're gonna maybe clean up the seats a little bit. Who knows? Let's get started. All right, here's a question. Here's the passenger seat. She's not as all broke up and ate up as the driver's seat is, but she is crispy. I wonder if I drench this stuff in a leather conditioner, if it would help bring it back a little bit before I sit in it and crack it all to hell. I'm going to try it. I've got this stuff. I do not remember where I bought it or what I bought it for. I know where I bought it. I'm thinking of just drenching the seats and letting this stuff soak in. Let's see if it helps it any. Can't hurt it, right? Well, these are crispy looking and feeling. They might be beyond repair. And these are supposed to be the actual or actual leather seats and not the fake ones. So let's try rubbing it all in. Don't know if it'll work, but worth a shot. At least I can say I tried it instead of sitting on them and cracking and wondering what would have happened if I had sprayed it. Now that right there, I mean, yeah, it's tight. I'm sure there's some better stuff. This just happens to be what was in the cabinet. Doesn't look like it's penetrating at all. Read that bottle again. Alright, says it is a leather three in one. Quickly clean, condition, and protect. I want to just condition. Oh, shake well before use. Yeah, we didn't do that. What are new buck leathers? Is that a new way of saying fake? Yeah, it doesn't feel like he's feeling shit. It says to leave on for two to three minutes. I feel like spraying it again and just leaving it on here all day. I honestly don't think it's going to work. Okay, that's nice and pliable, but that was like that before. See, this is like hard. Oh, and yeah, Dumas just cracked it. Alright, let's just let it sit. Alright, what we have here is the defroster switch. And I lost the other piece. Dang, nab it. That's what I get for walking around everywhere. Right there. I okay, got ahead of myself. See the defroster. See the defroster switch screws into the back from there and from here. But I broke this one off yesterday. So I'm going to attempt to epoxy it back together. Here's the other piece. All we have to do is match it up. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Well, first of all, let's use this really stinky crap. 
It's a plastic bonding, high strength structural adhesive. That to me sounds like it should work. I can get the other side to work. Oh, there we go. Way more than I need. What do they say? Better to have too much than not enough. So anywho, I know we said we're going to start on the door, but once I started moving stuff to get in to do the door, I saw this and I was like, well, we got to do the center console later. So might as well get this setting up, right? Sounds good. All right, there we go. Let's do this. I don't care if it sticks to the wood. Well, no, actually I do. But we should be able to get it off theoretically so first things first make sure you get it all on your fingers no don't do that okay that's together now I want to overlap stuff on quit touching things I want to overlap the top and hope that it makes it stronger We can always hope, right? Yes, I know. I'm making things worse. Side two. I foresee this biting me in the ass sticking to the wood. Let me do something about that. I'm simply going to scrape away the excess I got hanging out over here. Alright. No more touchy. That's enough. Oh, really? Y'all saw that coming, didn't you? See, I told you, I'm, I'm just not in the mood for any of this shit today. I should have stayed inside. Yes, I almost skipped showing y'all this. Bad me. All right. This is the switch we had earlier, okay? It's rough. I mean, I haven't cleaned it up yet, but this is sealed on this part. It's really sturdy. But, just to make sure, I'm going to put some on the back side also. And, this is my door handle. And what I've done is, I put the straw through where the bolt's supposed to go. And I put a washer down here for stability to help pull on this and the other piece, the piece that I'm going to make. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this epoxy. And I'm going to fill this crevice. And hope that it bonds with everything in there. What's the worst that can happen, right? I had that little stick from before. That would have been better for mixing this up. Alright. Go ahead and pour it in. Alright. itself out here I mean, what is the worst that can happen I ruin a broken armrest I mean really you already can't use it to open the door Alright, 
Sorry if I'm not talking, guys. I'm concentrating. So far, so good. Get back here a little bit in this corner. Over here. Oh, that might be enough. That might just be enough. I want a little overlapping so that it can all bond together. Okay. Like I said, just a little. Oh, damn it. Didn't mean to get it there. Alright, looks like I made just enough. Alright guys. We'll let that set overnight. And I think we're going to be done for today. Thank you very much. Alright, it's the next day. Starting a little bit late today because my daily driver, the battery died. So I was out there messing with it. That's just another story. Um, I want to show you the epoxy that I did in the armrest yesterday. Watch this. Look at that. And it's hard. So hard just like the plastic. So hopefully, hopefully that works. All right. Before we get started on the door, I know I said I was going to. Let's do epoxy in this one. This one's missing a lot more, so this might be a little more difficult. And this is going to take a lot more epoxy. But I think we were quite successful with the other one. That might be enough. Might be. If not, we can make more. Let's see what happens. I guess you would call this 3D printing with epoxy. That wouldn't be true. It's not 3D printing, but you know, it sounds better, doesn't it? Why don't we call it that? 3D printing with epoxy. Yeah. I'm messy already. Now, the good thing about this is, if the hole does not line up, I could probably drill it out with this type of epoxy. 
At least that's what I'm assuming. I have used every little bit of epoxy that I made. Now, let me get something to wipe that up with. Right, here we go. No epoxy on the outside. Now, I am sure that they make replacement parts for this but if this works like this did there's no need I do see one problem this needs to be up a little bit because it needs to have space behind it okay um yeah we're just gonna leave it alone now see what happens all right, everybody. That's a better look at the car. I gave it a little bit of a clean up. It's just hard to get the grease fingerprints out. Um, see, windows down. She looks so much better now that the windows can, op can open. You hop in with the T-top still on. Now, I didn't put everything back together completely because I need to go get some new vapor barrier. And then I will put the door cards back on. Same with the other side. I've hit them with a little bit of rust remover. I may may hit them up with a little uh, epoxy paint just to seal them up make them look pretty for the next person who excavates my stuff as for this the um it looks like it's turned out great it's all set up this one on the other hand though i think i'm gonna have to cut the straw out but um it's still a little soft we'll let it sit overnight but i would say that's another success Let's look at the other side, see what it did. Did it leak out? No, it didn't leak out at all. We're good, now that I've dumped everything. Oh well, give me something to do to pick it up. I still need to wax, not wax, wash the back of the car to get all these greasy fingerprints off. But instead, I think I'll go have lunch. Alright, we're going to continue on with the door here. Remember I told you I was probably going to epoxy this? And then I think I'm going to. Call it my OCD but I just don't like it like it is. I want it uniform. No one's ever going to see it, but I'll know it's there. So, let's get the epoxy. Oh, and so you know, new microphone. I think they actually work. Um, we'll call it operator error last time. There's not much left in this can, so let's just get rid of it. We're doing it down low first since uh, I don't have the window covered. And you're probably sitting there thinking, oh, that's just brilliant. Yeah, you're right. I forgot. I was just antsy to get started. Not to mention, let's plug the connector in. Oh, that was the other problem. I don't know if it works. It's a different style connector. We got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Um... If you remember last time, there was no power to the, from the switch. There was no power here, no power at the switch. And then come to find out, the harness just ended. It wasn't connected to anything. And then the driver's door was connected and went back behind the fuse box, but still had no power. So I still, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the driver's seat out, and then I'm going to lay on my back, and I'm going to completely undo that mess of a harness that somebody put in there and go wire by wire. But right now, I just wanted to at least feel like I accomplished something and I'm gonna cover this up. But I don't know if that's pointless or not. That it probably is pointless. You know what? It is pointless because I gotta get this video out tomorrow. No, today. I gotta get this video out today. So, I hate to say it, but I'm not gonna have time to get it all done. So what we will do here is end this today and then I will keep working because I don't want to put the door card back on until I know I have power going to the switch, going to the harness, going to the actuator. Plus I've got to do something about the actuator connector because it's not connecting correctly. Even though I ordered 
an actuator for a Corvette, they obviously sent me something generic because they don't match up. So I got to figure out how to make them connect. Okay. Okay. Well, anyway, this has been Whatever Garage out. Oh, make sure you subscribe, like, share, comment, all those sorts of things. I would love to hear from you.